Yes, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated dot com, or of course, if you are watching our fast growing YouTube channel, that's Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me from Petco Park in San Diego, California, it's our very own publisher Andrew Jones. And AJ here following Carolina's twenty eight twenty seven Holiday Bowl loss to fifteenth ranked Oregon. Um, Carolina fall into nine and five on the year, obviously after starting nine and one, four straight losses to end the year. So we'll hit on that a little bit later, kind of talk about what this game means and hit on some other things on the way to doing that. Before I kick it to you, AJ, I do want to read off some stats real quick uh, for the Tar Heels. Drake may led the way 18 for 35, 206 yards, three touchdowns, 45 rushing yards as well. Kobe P- Pesor led the Tar Heels in, in reception, seven catches, 98 yards, one touchdown, Marcus Allen, Cedric Gray led the defense with eight tackles apiece. So 414 total yards for Oregon, 335 total for North Carolina. Only 120 of those yards coming in the second half of the Tar Heels. So, AJ, we'll, we'll kind of start with, I don't want to necessarily say negatives, but there are some negatives to take away from this game. And then we'll, we'll talk about some positives here on after that. But I, I kind of want to start with something that's been a theme in, for this team really over the last four games in particular. And it's something that kind of flipped from the, from the first half of the season. And, just not being able to make plays down the stretch when it matters offensively and defensively. I know a lot of people are throwing a lot of shade on the defense as it's been a theme this year and rightly so at a lot of times, but Carolina as an offense had many chances in that second half to, to wrap the game up or at least extend the lead to a place that might've been insurmountable, but you know, hindsight's 2020 on that. So what are your thoughts on, on kind of the theme that's followed Carolina over the last four games? Cause again, it, it reared its head again tonight at, at Petco park. I had I was surrounded by Oregon writers. The, the, the layout for how they had us all situated was kind of odd. I'm, usually on the road, I'm with all North Carolina writers, and it was kind of interesting because one of the guys uh, I, I really enjoyed talking the game with, and we kind of had some fun with the game of inches stuff because you have the power Eccles interception, which was the epitome of a game of inches, and then you have the extra point by Oregon at the end of the game that was the epitome of a game of inches. And then you have Noah Ruggles, or excuse me, not Noah Ruggles, I'm channeling my 2020 I self. I make that mistake all the time, too. To, I know, my 2020 <laughs> self, Noah Burnett, who missed that field goal, which is something he did in the NC State game twice. So what I'm getting at is that usually when you lose a close game, it's not because the other team made plays a lot of the times because you didn't make certain plays or there were certain uh, uh, catastrophic mistakes. They were in position to win this game. They, they, they were down 14-7, and then they went like two and a half quarters where Oregon didn't score. Mm-hmm. The offense took the lead. They got the 21-14 lead, kind of held on to it for a while, but they had – they kind of stumbled, and they've stumbled a lot. I, the, the, the most false narrative in college football this year was that North Carolina was a high-octane offense. They've scored – Tar Heels scored 40 points twice since App State. Mm. So that's twice in the last 12 games, all right? They have, they have not scored in 40 points since October, all right? So – I don't think that offense was an offense that could just get you, get in the end zone every time it needed to. This wasn't just a Phil Longo thing. I, I think that there was, there's a reason they went out and got a couple of receivers in the portal, highly accomplished kids. I, I don't think they always had great routes. Guys weren't always getting open. There were a couple of times tonight, in fact, on Drake's first sack. It was, a, it was a jailbreak, but it was also a coverage situation. How many times did Drake have to run, especially early? Guys weren't getting open. Yeah. So you could say really good pass coverage. Well, Oregon's pass defense stinks. I'm sitting next to Oregon writers, and they're telling me all night long about how awful their pass defense is. I'm like, well, you know, have a beer on me, pal. Look at what they're going against, okay? <clears throat> but they didn't make the plays. Like they didn't make. It's not so much the last ten minutes. It's before that. They had a. They were in position to put this game away. Drake missed pace on a ball that would have been a touchdown. I think it was late in the third quarter, I believe. That was that moment where the high octane offense is hit on that play. There were a couple of others where they get fourth and two at the goal line and Mac kicks the field goes for the field goal. And he said after the game, I should have, I should have gone for it. I, I think the gun shy nature of not being able to run the ball in tight situations that was born throughout the course of the season and got worse as the season went on led to that decision. They were four for four and fourth down tonight. Mm-hmm. Go for it on that one. 
if you don't score, they have the ball at the two or the one, and they still need a touchdown to win the game. And a field goal kind of doesn't really change anything because they get the ball and they had a return out to the 38 or whatever it was. So yeah, I, I'm not going to beat on them for the way it ended. I, I think North Carolina is a good football team. I thought tonight they showed they're a good football team, but they also show that they have pieces that don't exist or there are pieces that they need that do not exist. I, I don't know how many of those pieces they're going to have on the roster next year. I do think a lot of the ones they have now will be better. Mm-hmm. But um, the, on the negative side, you knew the defense was going to give up some scores. I did not like the scheme on the last drive. They had six defensive backs on, on the field, two linemen with a hat on the hand on the ground. It's your Colby Cowan almost playing like a jack. He was an upright rush end, which I, I hadn't seen him upright all year. When I say upright, he, was, he wasn't standing upright, but he didn't have a hand on the ground. I hadn't seen that all year. It looked like they had sort of – thrown something together there for that last drive and it didn't work maybe i don't know i don't want to go into the thinking i don't know what gene chiswick was thinking and he certainly knows a hell of a lot more about this than i do but i think i even tweeted out when carolina had its possession where it kicked the field goal to go up 27 to one west they're going to need a touchdown yeah oregon's going to score another touchdown you just kind of knew it and, and that's unfortunate for the defense to kind of get on them for that because they played so well most of the game they didn't let nicks go explosive on them yeah, they gave up some runs, but they were getting off the field. They got the interception. They got a fourth down stop. They had five straight possessions for Oregon, which the Ducks didn't score. And that's the number four offense in America. Number 14 rushing offense, number 15 passing offense, I think the number eight or nine scoring offense. The defense played winning football tonight. But the offense didn't get touchdowns when they needed touchdowns. And so by not get, by not making it happen late, I think it was earlier than the game that put them in that bad situation late where Mac made a call that he said he'd probably do different now. And the defense just kind of let them march right down the field. Yeah. And I, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of Carolina fans were just so surprised when they scored on the final drive too, because it's just been a theme this year, you know? And, and I think the reason I'm saying that is because I've, you know, been on Twitter after the game and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Cause I think the fan base is kind of split in three different ways right now. It's been kind of interesting to watch, but AJ steered away from the negatives. Let, let's focus on, some positives from tonight. Cause I think there are some positives to take away. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, you know, some young guys stepped up and played well, Andre green, obviously a really nice touchdown catch and kind of his first real appearance for the Tar Heels. I know he's played some this year, but actually been a major kind of focal point in the offense for parts of that game. Kobe pace or continues when he gets an opportunity this season to impress for the most part. Uh, I thought Will Hardy at that safety position played well. And, you know, there's some other guy I'm not going to sit here and list. I could, there's some other guys I could list as well. I'm not going to do that, but overall, I think that was a positive. Not only did, you know, did they play well, but they, they made plays and, and on the defensive side, some of those young guys were, were physical, hitting hard, aggressive, and I think that's what you want to see from young guys out there as well. So in a lot of ways, you can look at that and say, you know, the future is bright. Now doing that throughout a season over a 12 game season is a completely different animal than just doing it in a bowl game. So we'll kind of see what happens next year and only time will tell with that. But I do think particularly with the young guys and some other things I'm sure you'll hit on, there are some positives to take away. It's not all doom uh, and gloom, even though it does feel like it on the Carolina side right now, it, it shouldn't just be all doom and gloom. You look at the stats since Everybody was jumping all over Gene Chizik in the defense because of stats for the first what, nine games, ten games, whatever it was. If you look mm-hmm. at the last four, Georgia Tech, NC State, Clemson. Clemson only had like 363 yards or whatever it was. And then tonight, uh, the defense played pretty well. They, they improved. So it was a really short post-game press conference. It wasn't Carolina making it short. It was the bowl people making it short, which was unfortunate, but Mac was really gracious to give the traveling North Carolina media that, that, that were here tonight about maybe 18 minutes outside in the hallway, outside the press conference room in the hallway. And it was some really good stuff. A lot of it was program in nature kind of stuff. And one of the questions that I had asked Cedric Gray in the press conference about those five straight possession series in which they kept Oregon from scoring and how the defense had had stretches like that it was after the Wake Forest game, that they really kind of flipped the switch in some respects on certain aspects of the game. So I asked Mac the same question and, and he said, well, you know, there were some things that improved. And I said, 
like angles. You talked a lot about angles being really bad earlier in the year. Is that one of the things that really improved? And 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 we we saw that tonight. And they've done it enough that maybe that's who the defense became on its final night on a field. And he said yes. So if you want to look at positives. I know that a lot of people are going to dog Dean Chiswick because they still have App State in their mind. They still have Notre Dame in their mind, okay? But they need to understand that in the last four times this defense took the field, and a lot of it with younger dudes that are going to be starters next year or in great positions to start after some older guys have moved on in their spots that could have come back, is that the angles defensively were much, much better. You didn't see that many whiffs. Guys miss tackles. It's going to happen. But you didn't see, like, egregious stuff for the most part. There were some big plays, but teams are going to have big plays, especially the one they played tonight. Another positive, Power Eccles early in the year was not using dime packages. He came off the field. But who's out there in in the past – that pass defense tonight in those dime package situations making yeah. plays. He had the interception because he stayed with it. Cedric, of course, in coverage. Cedric in coverage later on. Cedric with the blitz. Cedric Gray is an outstanding football player. And it's such a huge thing that he's going to be back for this team next year. But Power Echoes' development as a guy who can play every down, I thought, is something we saw in the last four or five games of the season. And that's who he is going in to next year. You mentioned Will Hardy, Marcus Allen. And Marcus Allen came from out of nowhere, and he's physical. I saw a much more physical secondary tonight, and I did also against Clemson. It was just the score skewed maybe the snaps on the field. I saw a physical defense against NC State. I saw a team that I think started to grow in that direction against Georgia Tech because that's when Allen went out there, and Hardy starts playing a lot. So I saw more physicality. I saw better angles. I didn't see as many whiffs. And we saw the other fantastic uh, potential linebacker in power record become an every down guy. So they're going to take all that in the offseason. They need to get better up front, Jacob. And, and that was obvious tonight. You know, they get a sack. And I didn't even have to look to see them get up to see who got it. Because we we we're in the press box for baseball. So it's a little bit like Miami. You're sort of catty corner in the corner of the end zone. But I knew it was Cayman Rucker. I knew because of where the sack came from and because one was allowed to got a sack. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it came as a sack DE, but he, he's not a hand on the ground interior line guy. Those guys aren't getting sacks. And then they got another one. It was Cedric Gray who made the play. So there were definitely positives. I, I thought they showed a lot of grit. They were physical. Like I said, um, I thought that, the young guys, Hardy and Allen, played the pass well. They kept stuff in front of them. They were physical. They played the run well. You mentioned Allen. He tied for the lead in tackles yep. tonight for a kid tackles, who wasn't yeah. getting – he wasn't getting any reps six weeks ago. So there were a lot of very positive things. And I just think that we saw some good culture tonight. Mm -hmm. Even though they lost the game, even though they had a lead and they gave up 14 points in the last six and a half minutes, I still think we saw good culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Oregon's a better football team. And Oregon had to scrap until the last 19 seconds, really until the last play, because Carolina snapping the damn thing at the 42. Mm -hmm. I thought they should have run, run a regular play and thunder underneath the defense, see if they could spring some or get a penalty instead of the Hail Mary. But again, that's why I make peanuts doing this. And I don't make millions as a coach. So um, I think a lot of positives. I, I, the defense, especially, the offense needs some work, and, and they brought in some guys that are going to fix some things, right? But the defense, I think, ends the season kind of going like this. Mm -hmm. People need people need to pump the brakes on the criticism and, and recognize it, that while the offense kind of went this way late, the defense went that way. Mm -hmm. And if you want to win a championship next year, yeah, you got to score points, but you got to stop people. Yeah. You got to stop people enough. And I think the defense did that for the most part in the last four games. They did it tonight against a really good offense. For a while, Bo Nix was not a factor. No, nah, he, he was poor did, for a lot of that game, yeah. And the defense did that to him. So, Carolina mm -hmm. fans, you feel disregard losing four in a row, disregard all that stuff. Just look at what you saw on the field tonight. If you didn't know what the score was, you'd think, you know what, that's a pretty good football team. Mm -hmm. And on that side of the ball. And, and that's what I think people should take into the offseason. Yeah, no doubt. We'll talk about what this means real quick before we wrap it up. Obviously, you know, like I said earlier, Carolina started the season 9-1, and won the Coastal Division. Well, but four straight losses to end the year, including losses to NC State. 
Georgia uh, Tech and the and Clemson in, in the ACC championship game, and obviously Oregon tonight. So finishing nine and five, not the not the ending. Carolina fans are you know the program won. It was just one win away from a ten game season, which hasn't been done in, in a very long time. So it would have been a big accomplishment. But um, looking at it, I, I, I look at it. I've been on Twitter afterwards, and you know message boards and stuff like that. And I, there's three. I'm, I've seen the UNC fan base kind of split in three different ways. You got a section who's kind of like, eh, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm done with the program. I'm done with football till next August or, you know, when spring, whenever, whenever they get back into it, you've also got another portion of the fan base. Who's just get rid of all the coaches and we'll be fine. And you've got a third portion of the fan base who is kind of like, yeah, you know, young guys played well tonight. Future's looking bright, kind of optimistic for next season. That's kind of how I'm seeing it right now. And I kind of, I see all three sides of those in some ways because of the different issues that this team has had this year, but also some of the things that they accomplished as well. And some of the young guys that did play well tonight, not only played well tonight, but throughout the season, Drake may be in one of them. He's, he's first year as a starting quarterback and, you know, he's a Heisman candidate and talked about being a first round, not maybe a top five pick in the draft next year. So there are a lot of positives to take away from tonight, but I think the way this season ended though is a negative. I don't think there's any way you can sugarcoat. I know Mac was very happy with the fight tonight, but still, when you look at the last four games, three of those four games, it was, you know, coming down to the end and not being able to make plays when it matters most, you know, put the Clemson game aside. That was, that was just a blowout in more ways than one. But I think that's kind of where the taste is in Carolina fans' mouth. And I think a win tonight, which I thought Carolina was the better team for a large majority of that game would have left such a better taste going into the offseason. That's not the case now. That's not the reality reality that we're living in now. So, AJ, what are your thoughts on what this kind of means, not only for this season, but going into the offseason? Because there's not a lot of happiness in the fan base right now. I'll just put it that way. Well, there's a couple ways to look at it. I asked Mac in the press conference, uh, you know, he, would, he had already addressed a lot of the positives from tonight. And I said, how do you juxtapose that against the fact that you're taking four straight losses in the offseason and you have to carry that for the next eight months? And Mac is really good. You can tell sometimes maybe he, he's really good at spinning stuff. And I don't think, and that's not a criticism. That, that, that's an absolute compliment. Yeah. You can sell ice to an Eskimo. It's a good thing to have. It's a good trade to have, yeah. <laughs> he is brilliant at it. And, and, and there are a lot of times where he kind of helps me. I kind of change the way I'm thinking about something because sometimes we forget the positive. Sometimes we forget the fact that these kids are going to get a ring. Say what you want about the Coastal Division, but the other six teams didn't win it. They did. Okay, they got nine wins. They went, what, 6-0 and on the road in the regular season in true red games. And this was a road game tonight. But 30, I would say 90% of the people here, 85% of the people here were Oregon fans. So, you know, he's going to spin. He's, he's even talking, well, it's got him a road game. He's really good at doing that. But you can't hide from a four-game losing streak. You can't hide from a four-game losing streak that began – against Georgia Tech at home. Yeah, yeah. You can't hide from a four-game losing streak that the next week was a home game against your arch rival you should have beat. No excuse. You can't hide from a four-game losing streak that included the loss to Clemson. Okay, so you're going to have that. I, I don't think anybody was surprised by that. But then you bookend it with a game that they gave up two touchdowns in the last 6.58 of the game a game in which the offense didn't score a touchdown in the second half and didn't have a scoring drive more than, what, 48 yards yeah. after the middle of the second quarter, whenever it was. So there were a lot of things to pick at. And when you look at a four-game losing streak that has alarming red flags, how about going back to the fourth quarter of the Wake Forest game, which is right before this four-game streak started. Jacob, they scored 10 touchdowns in their last 52 possessions of the season. Yeah. Okay, they, they, they lost a game late to NC State. They lost a game late here today, and then they gave up plays that they didn't back up. You can have a play where it's a turnover or something like that, but the defense goes out there and they don't let the opponent capitalize on it. Oregon didn't do that after the Eccles play. Carolina went right at them and scored, right? Mm -hmm. Oregon's had that problem this year at times. Carolina against Clemson, they, they were unable to – overcome their own mistakes they, they, they let it beat them each time so in the four game losing streak that's what you have so you're going to go into the off season i guarantee you when mac and the staff sit down january 6th which is when they're going to reconvene and they start talking about the season evaluating 
I'm sure that the staff's not going to surround and say, yeah, but, you know, we won nine games. We won the Coastal. I know we got a lot of issues to clean up, but we just won. Well, we won nine games, Coach. It's only the second time it's been done since you were here before. We won the Coastal. It's only the second time in school history. I don't think the staff's going to say that. So I get what Max saying, and I think he's right in saying that. And I do think that they're valid, fair points because the people who want to run this staff out have absolutely no common sense whatsoever. They had five wins in, in two years before they got here. What has this program been since he left? I covered the John Buddy. I love John Buddy to death. He's a great man. He's a wonderful guy. But those were terrible teams for the most part with horrific defenses. Then you bring in a guy who you kind of sell your soul, bring in Butch Davis. He builds an alligator uh, filled uh, moat around the program, says, stay away, and look what happens. All right. Then you bring in Larry Fedora, guy who has won 12 games at Southern Miss. He's got this fed spread, you know, drinking Red Bull every 15 minutes. And I like Larry, too. He's a good man. Larry handled a very difficult situation very well and got them competitive. And they were fun. People enjoyed watching them until they started realizing they can't stop anybody. Mm. And then the program just fell apart. That's what, and I shouldn't, I can't forget the tour bush years. Yeah. A lot of people probably would like to, but um, I can't forget that. That's what North Carolina has been until Mac came here. So what does he do? Wins seven games the first year, beats South Carolina neutral site, beats Miami in thrilling fashion, routes Temple in the bowl game. They win seven games. All right. The next year they go to the Orange Bowl, first major bowl in 71 years. The next year it's a step back year. That happens. Look at Baylor and Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda is the all everything guy. Look at them this year. Remember Matt Campbell up at Iowa State, the all everything guy. Look at what they did this year. That happens. When you're not Alabama, that happens. Hell, LSU had a year like that a couple of years ago. So they had to step back here and Mac learned some things. We talked about during the course of the year. And one of them was I got to make some changes on defense. We can't, that, that doesn't apply here, not with our athletes. So they did make some changes. And I think we saw a better defense tonight than what we saw in the bowl game last year. Certainly a much more organized defense. Yeah. So there was progress ultimately made there. So now a change is happening in offense. They need to get better on offense. They need to cash in more in red zone. They need to be better in tight situations. When you have that fourth and two next year in the situation they were in tonight, you got to go for it and you got to run the ball. You got to pound it in and score. It didn't happen tonight because I think the residue of not being confident in that situation was there. So they won nine games. They won their division. They were so close to winning 10, so close to winning 11, so close to winning 12. That's where they are four years in. So Max said after Notre Dame, don't judge us now, judge us after the season. We'll have fuller podcasts that we do here in the next week or two. But I will say right now, you can't deny that the program is making progress. It may not be at the rate that a lot of people want. A lot of people may think that Mac told them he was going to compete for a national title in four years, which he never did. But they moving in the right direction. How far is this thing going to go? I have no idea. There are certainly things that we've seen that make you think, wow, maybe that national title competition thing, CFP competition thing is never going to happen. Who knows? But most programs that get really good and stay really good have to go through each step of the process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those steps are not pretty. And a lot of those steps raise a lot of doubt. A lot of people doubted Dabo, the whole Clemsoning thing. A lot of people doubted a lot of coaches. And this guy here has done it before. And he's made North Carolina a hell of a lot better than it was when he took over. And I'm not a shill for Mac Brown or anything like that, because I do think there are some things that people have a right to be concerned about with respect to some areas of player development and some of the decision-making. But I think as a whole – Tonight showed that this is a good football team that is getting tougher on defense, and they have a lot of these guys back. They need to get better on offense, Jacob. They need to have a little bit better plan on offense. They need to have more receivers that can run routes. They need to be better in protection. They need to figure out the running back room. Elijah Green did a lot of real nice things, but there wasn't that you know, seven yards a pop, seven yards a pop type run game with him. We got to. They got to figure out what are they going to do with Omar and Hampton. You know, where is he with respect to vision and decisions making? Decision making with where he cuts and holding on to the football. George Petaway showed some flashes tonight. 
whether he had a number 42 or number 23. They've got to, they've got to see where he is because he's an explosive kind of guy. There are a lot of – there's still a lot of four-star guys in this program that were rivals 250 guys whose talent needs to step forward. And, and they have to get those guys in that position over the next eight months. And if that happens, and suddenly Hampton and Petaway are explosive running backs, and Andre Green is that explosive, fleet-footed receiver that you see it at Alabama, and you see at Ohio State that you haven't seen much in North Carolina, then suddenly that changes things. There are parts there. Some of them have to grow, some of them are already in place, and some of them have to be fit to the scheme moving forward. I know this is a really, really long answer to your question about what this means, but I do think there are a lot of things headed in the right direction. It's just not going to, it's just not going at the pace that most people watching this or listening to this want it to be. And they have a right to want more. They have a right to be upset about some things, but they should also take a step back and recognize that so many good things are in place. And if you think that a new country staff come in and get this thing in better shape next year, Maybe it would. Who knows? But I wouldn't be a proponent of that if I was a North Carolina fan at all. I think you got to roll with what you got and have a lot of faith in the fact that the needle has been moved forward in this program to a point where they could be ready to explode next year. It's very, very possible. They got a good schedule. It's not. A, it's not an easy schedule. It's not a terribly difficult schedule. But they get to play Clemson, and they've got a guy named Drake May. And when you have him, you have a chance to win games. They get better around him, they have a chance to win a ton of games. Mm. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll we'll know about a year from today. So we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. Was that the, was that the longest? What does this mean? Uh, yeah. Ever? Yeah, I mean, but there's there is so many things you you can go with it because I do I think there's positives and I do think there's negatives. I do think there's reasons to be optimistic, and I do think there's a lot of reasons to be concerned going into next year too. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll kind of see what happens. Yeah. And, that, and we'll talk about this more in podcasts, like you said, over the next few weeks and in the offseason. There's a reason they hit the, there's a reason they've hit the portal hard. Yeah. That's They're a addressing point. a lot of needs. So what you saw tonight, add in some pretty good guys from the portal, and that should be a little bit more reason for optimism. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. It's a good place to end today, Jay. And I think we'll wrap it up there for 137 a.m. edition of the three things post game. I guess it's only what a what 1037 over there for you though with the on the 1037. West Coast. I have yeah, you're good man. And I have a flight in 14 hours. So I'm still pretty good. I get to bang out six thousand content items. I'm probably gonna go back to the hotel room. My hotel's just right down the road. So That's a smart move. I'll probably yeah. do everything back there. Nice man. Well, I'll let you get go, to it because then you got go, a thousand go get, things go to do. Steal a pot of coffee from the hotel lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of them at least man. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. No doubt about that. A couple of them, at least you're probably going to need, but I'll let you get to it, man. Cause like you say, you do got a lot of stuff to, to get fly, on. Make sure... Fly to Pittsburgh tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. Basketball game coming up. You know, I, I yeah. land at 11 PM tomorrow now. Tomorrow night. And then 13 hours later, tip off at Peterson events. Yeah, gotta love it, man. Overlap is officially over though. AJ kind of. Kind, yeah. When kind I get of. home, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. When you get, when you, when you get back to Raleigh, it, it'll be over. So just look forward to that AJ, but I'm going to let you go, man. Make sure you keep it locked to tarlowstrade.com for all your post-game coverage from tonight's game. And obviously for basketball season, which will be hitting hard um, officially with football season now wrapped up. And, and major thank you to everybody that's followed along throughout the entire football season who's watched all our videos, including this and the UNC football show as well. So make sure you keep it locked to our YouTube channel as well. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones for another episode of our three things post-game podcast series. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. See you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.